So again, if two trumpets in 2012 marked the appointed sign of the trumpet in the Bible, and true Hanukkah in 2013 marked part of the second sign of the dragon in the Bible and also the sign of the Hopi, then is it possible that true trumpets and true Hanukkah in 2014 might have, there might be an event on that date as well, I don't know, but it almost seems like it was sign one in 2012 and sign two in 2013 and the next event in Revelation 12 is the escape. Almost seems like that. I'm not saying that's what it is, but it's just an observation. But this year, a solar eclipse occurred on the first day of true trumpets. And true trumpets this year is the third trumpet from the sign that occurred on true trumpets in 2012. So this is the third year from the sign and a solar eclipse started on the first day of that. True Hanukkah this year starts on January 14th and this is really going to blow your mind. On that first day of true Hanukkah, January 14th, Virgo will give birth to asteroid YU55 at the exact moment the moon is beneath her feet. And this seems to be a continuation of the signs from Revelation 12, the woman in heaven giving birth and the moon beneath her feet. So there have been more than just the exact sign that occurred in 2012. There have been partial fulfillments both before and after that main sign that occurred in 2012. So you, you, might, you might remember the partial fulfillment of the first sign that occurred on the standard Feast of Trumpets in 2011 when Elenin was in alignment with the, the Earth and the Sun. The moon was at the feet of Virgo while Elenin was in the raised hand of Virgo right here and Venus, the morning star, was in her belly. And I admit back in 2011, I thought this was the sign of Revelation 12, but after more in-depth study of the material, I found that the true complete fulfillment of the first and second sign of Revelation 12 occurred on October 16th, 2012 and the week before with the meteor shower because Saturn has to be down here in a position to devour the child as soon as it's born and the celestial object has to be at the birth canal like it is here and this celestial object has to represent the child with the rod of iron, which the texts tell us is the Lord of Lords, which for the true followers of Jesus is the bridegroom. And Psalm 19 tells us the son represents the bridegroom. So the sign in Revelation 12 happened in 2012, and it won't happen again for another 500 years. It did not happen in 2011, as I thought three years ago, and it does not happen in 2017, as some other people are saying now. I've addressed this before in a video called Virgo's Crown of 12,000 Stars. Jupiter does not represent Jesus because it was the Roman king of the gods. The Roman Empire was the beast. So once you understand that, you know that this cannot be the sign of Revelation 12. The king of kings is the bridegroom Jesus, not Jupiter, who is the son of Saturn. So the complete sign occurred in 2012 with the sun representing the bridegroom, just as Psalm 19 says. And this is encouraging because we're told the rescue or escape will happen after this sign. We're not told how much longer after, we're just told it will happen after this. But because this occurred in the midst of Daniel's week, it looks like it's coming very, very soon. Um, we're in, like I said, the third year from the sign right now. And, I, and, and that could be significant. Three is a, an important number in the biblical text. So both the first and second sign 
in Revelation 12 happened in 2012, but there was a partial glimpse of it the year before in 2011 on standard trumpets on the Elenin alignment and another partial glimpse of it the year after the main sign right here in 2013 when the blue star went through the dragon constellation on true Hanukkah right here. And now there is another partial glimpse of the sign on true Hanukkah this year relating to YU55, which was part of that Elenin sign in 2011. So Revelation 12 tells us the escape will happen after two signs. First, the sign of the woman giving birth in heaven. And second, the dragon casting the stars to earth with its tail and standing before the woman waiting to devour her child. So part of that second sign was the position of the planet Saturn on the date of the sign itself waiting to devour the sun out of Virgo. And the other part of that second sign was the draconid meteor shower that occurred a week before the sign itself that year. But the third part of that second sign was the tail of the dragon. And if that tail represents a comet, well, there was a comet traveling through the dragon constellation exactly on Hanukkah the following year. So we had an indication the sign was coming on this Elenin alignment on the Standard Feast of Trumpets in 2011. Then we had the full, complete two signs on in October of 2012. And the first part of that sign was fulfilled exactly on October 16th of 2012, which was the date Elenin was closest to the sun the year prior, the exact date. So, um, and then we have the partial connection to the sign with the passage of the blue star through the dragon on true Hanukkah in 2013, right after the full sign. And then on true Hanukkah this year, another partial connection to that sign when Virgo gives birth to YU55. So I admit I can't quite grasp the full implications of this yet, but these signs appear to be warning about the asteroid impact that the book of Revelation is predicting while at the same time heralding the rescue event. Okay, now look at this. Remember Earth on the Cross in 2011. I have a video right here. I'll try to remember to link it below. A video from back in 2011 that's explaining that. There was another YouTuber that noticed part of this. Basically, Earth was in the middle of a cross formation made by the positions of Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Earth is in exact alignment between Jupiter and Saturn on Halloween 2011 and exits the alignment on November 9th, 2011. So on Halloween 2011, Earth was basically on the cross. And... In the story of the crucifixion, Jesus rose up to heaven three days after he was crucified. And the Bible also says days represent years. So three years from Halloween 2011, when earth was on the cross, lands on Halloween 2014. And Halloween in 2014 lands on the true appointed time of atonement. And atonement is the next appointment to be fulfilled since the first four appointed times seem to have been recorded in the Bible. You can see right here. And the appointed sign of trumpets occurred in 2012. So atonement seems to be the next appointment to be fulfilled. And it occurs exactly on the evening of Halloween until the evening of All Saints Day this year. Okay, now get this. 
the Draconid meteor shower and the Leonid meteor shower have played a role in all of these warnings. And there are exactly 40 days between these two meteor showers. The Draconid meteor shower right here and the Leonid meteor shower here. So in the story of Noah, it says it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights. So could that possibly be a reference to the meteor showers that include the Draconids, Orionids, and Leonids through this 40-day period? Also, this year, the Leonid meteor shower lands on Tuesday the 18th, and as weird as this may seem, I, I, I had a dream back in 2013 about something starting on Tuesday the 18th. I explained it in this video right here. It's in the, the playlist, Dreams, Visions, and Synchronicities. I saw this calendar with only one week showing, and it started on the 18th. And then a few nights later, I, I dreamt about a person reciting off the names of the week, but they started on Tuesday. And... The Tuesday after I dreamt this was the 18th. So for some reason, at the time, it seemed important. And that's why I entered it on the calendar. I'm, I'm not sure why I recorded it so far in the future, but it, it, it just happens to land on the Leonids this year. It's probably nothing, but that's why that's there. I mean, sometimes I, I dream something and it seems important. And sure enough, it comes true a month later or something but other times I'll dream something and think it's insignificant but it ends up being the one thing in the dream that comes true so I, I don't I really don't know but I, I did dream something about that so that might just be a coincidence who knows but also notice that November 9th this year is the 150th day from the true anniversary of Noah's flood this year which occurred June 13th through the 15th, the major watch this year that I stated in February of this year was from June 11th until June 15th because of Noah's flood timeline ending on the true 17th day of the second month when Noah's reign starts in the Bible. So the 13th right here overlapped the two timelines for a major watch from June 11th until the 15th. And the Camp Spiker massacre occurred, according to this wiki article right here, from June 12th until the 15th, exactly on that watch. However, the watch itself was based on the flood timeline, which we're told in Revelation and the book of Jeremiah will be caused by an asteroid hitting the sea. And strangely enough, that's what the movie Noah seems to depict, the movie that came out this year in 2014. So this event right here that happened exactly on that watch date it doesn't seem related to a flood at first glance. However, the Islamic State is directly associated with Revelation 9, which talks about an army rising out of the Euphrates, which you can see is the exact area the Islamic State rose out of. And Revelation 9, that talks about that army, describes the events that will occur after the asteroid impact. And this asteroid impact, at least one of them, the texts say, will hit the Sea of Babylon, which appears to be the Atlantic Ocean. So this Euphrates army event that happened exactly on that watch date connected to the flood timeline um, is what Revelation 9 is talking about. It will kill the, they will kill those living in the area where the asteroid is going to impact. And this massacre that they did on that watch date, it seems to me at least like another warning of what is coming. The asteroid that's going to hit the sea and the one that's going to hit the land, darkening the sky and the massacre after that. Okay, so I have to stop this part right here. The link to the playlist is below.